finally found a suitable piece of ash and the time is finally here to make a hurley. Now we can't use any old piece of ash, it has to be from the roots. You can see there the trunk would have been here and all of this would have been underground and the grain curves. First thing we'll do anyway is grab the pattern and just place it down onto the ash there and match the curve of the hurley with the grain of the wood. Then we use our pencil here just to kind of mark out where it's going to go. Normally the shape then would be cut out with either a bandsaw or a jigsaw but in our quest to do everything the old school style I have the old rip cut saw here that we're going to use to cut out the shape. We have it cut the whole way along down to the curve but I couldn't get the saw to twist so we have a handy little tool here known as a keyhole saw and if you see there we just stick it in like that and we can use it to cut this curve here. <laughs> the rough shape of it now lads, now we need to come at it with the old um, coping saw. Times like this now with the coping saw that I wish I used power tools the odd time but there's no tools like the old tools. Feck it anyway. There we go. Let's say we use no drop of oil this time, maybe. But to cut this dip into the hurley, we've just made a load of cuts along this part of the ash, and then we come along with our mallet and our chisel, and then we can just pop all them off one by one. Callum, and he giving me all the inspiration I need. Good men yourself. So it's finally starting to look like a hurley. Now we need to bring out the spoke shave and the hand plane to round it out and smooth it. For those of you not from Ireland who might be a bit lost, Hurling is a native Irish sport of Gaelic origin and uh, once upon a time they would have just used sticks but um, at some point we decided to start making them out of ash planks. We have our attached to the table here now and we're just using the four and a half to thin out the handle so it's thinner than the head. I have a whittling knife here then I'm going to use just to carve out this part here on the back of the handle. I'm using a wooden spoke shape then along the shaft just to round out the edges. It's important to go with the grain or else you get something known as tear out. It's fairly hard to see on camera but see all these little rough patches. That's the tear out. It's hard enough to explain why tear out happens, but imagine you're petting a dog or a cat and you decide to rub them against the natural flow of their fur instead of with it. She prefers when you go with it, so we'll do that. I'm after spending nearly an hour or so smoothing it out, and the final step is to come along with this thing here. It's known as a cabinet scraper, and it's what they would have used instead of sandpaper once upon a time, and we're just gonna come along and take a last shaving off it just to finish it off and make it smooth. Last but not least, we'll grab a few shavings and just kind of rub it along the hurley at speed and the friction will make a nice shiny burnish on the hurley. So here we have it, lads, ready to go. You can see there it's flexing. I probably went a bit heavy on it, but I can always shave down more down the line if I need to. Um, I'm quite happy with it, first ever hurley, so we'll see now if we can swing with it. Now I'm nobody's all-star, but we give it a go. Hey, you didn't break any windows. Belly Rovers might take me on yet. I would also like to dedicate this video to my beloved mother, who at some point today will come to find two of her coffee mugs have made a high speed visit to the kitchen floor. I love you, Mum. Also to ash, it makes very strong, flexible, shock resistant timber. Unfortunately, due to ash dieback, I'd say we'll be seeing a lot less ash hurlies and a lot more bamboo ones down the line. Also, a big shout out to Caleb from LMG Sports. He gave me a load of advice and he sold me the ash to make the hurley, so go check out their TikTok page. Impressive stuff.